Hey, what's up folks? David here again, coming at you from Northern Ireland. And you know, we've been talking a lot about Irish music here on the channel recently. In this video, we're gonna be diving a little bit deeper into that Irish jig picking pattern and specifically showing you how you can use the Irish triplet technique to really spice up your playing in this six, eight time signature. Sounds something like this. As you can hear, it's a pretty fun and exciting technique to use over these tunes, but it is rather challenging because, as you may have seen in a previous lesson video that we did here on the channel, we're adopting a new picking pattern for this fast 6-8 time signature to help accent the stronger beats in the measure to give the music a little bit more swing and make the tunes really come to life rhythmically. And that pattern, of course, is down, up, down, down, up, down. And if you're not already confident with that picking pattern, definitely start there first by checking out this lesson in the cards above because that's gonna be the foundation for pretty much everything that we're talking about here. Because the real trick with these Irish triplets is knowing how to add in that extra pick stroke without totally disrupting the pattern and changing the feel of the tune altogether. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. And let me start off by answering a question that I hear from a lot of folks. Does it matter what pick you use for these embellishments? Some of you folks might know that a lot of traditional Irish players who play tenor banjo or Irish guitar, they usually play with a really thin teardrop shaped pick like this, maybe 0.5 to 0.6 millimeters. In fact, when I was growing up, I used to play a lot of tenor banjo with an Irish band and really enjoyed using these thinner picks on that instrument because it makes the triplets a little bit easier to play because of the flop and the flex in the pick. And some people do like using these on the mandolin as well, but I think the caveat is that the shorter scale length and the double core strings is gonna add to the brightness of the sound on this instrument with a thinner pick. So by comparison, here's a thicker pick that I like to use for other styles of music on the mandolin. It's a 1.3 millimeter extra stiff Golden Gate Triangle pick. Sounds like this. You can probably tell there's a world of difference even just between these two picks here, and there's so many different pick options out there. It's hard to say if there's one that's better than the other, but my ear definitely gravitates more towards the darker, more mellow sound that you get with these thicker, stiff picks like this. So I'll be using this thicker Golden Gate pick for the rest of this video, but try out some different options on your own and see what you like best. All right, so once you got your pick, let's talk about the mechanics of how these triplets actually work with your right hand. And a lot of people ask me, you know, does the motion come from your forearm? Does it come from your wrist, from your fingers? And that's a question that's to be a little bit different depending on your personal playing style. So for me, when I play just other stuff with my right hand, I like to use both my forearm and my wrist and uh, sound something like this. And to my knowledge, I'm not really changing much or anything about my technique when I come to play these faster Irish triplets. I'm just leaning on that foundation of the technique I've already established and trying to put the pick through the string a little bit faster. <laughs> To be fair, it's taken me a long time to feel even remotely comfortable playing these triplets, so it's not something that's gonna come automatically. But my advice would be to start off with your normal playing technique, your normal right hand approach, and just start playing these triplets and allow your body to start filling in the blanks and to evolve and change to best suit this technique. So the real important thing is to actually practice playing these triplets and you're gonna get better at them just like anything else in music. <laughs> but one little technique trick to try out here, I have seen some tenor banjo players and mandolin players bend their thumb in like this at the beginning of a triplet. That way they're making the knife edge of the pick go into the strings at a steeper angle, which means that there's less surface area at the pick meeting the strings, which I guess means that there would be less friction, less resistance to push the pick through the strings at a faster rate for these triplets. So try that out if you want. But let's just actually start playing these things down. Maybe the best way to start is just grab your open A string and start trying this out without worrying about the context of a picking pattern or a, a time signature or anything like that. We're gonna be doing these triplets starting on a downstroke, which means you're just gonna be doing down, up, down, and that's it. And you can start out even that slow if you want to. 
and then let's just slowly start speeding things up. And don't worry about making mistakes. The main purpose here is just to get comfortable playing these faster. And speed is really important here. I think one of the confusing things about this technique is that we usually call them triplets in the Irish community, but I think what's really going on is that we're playing two sixteenth notes followed by an eighth note. In other words, we're trying to get through this triplet as fast as possible to really accent the percussive nature of this embellishment. Because the end goal, I think, is to really mimic the sound that you hear in Irish fiddle playing and Irish pipe playing, where there's a real percussive aspect to this embellishment. To help drive that point home, for the rest of this video, we're gonna be notating these triplets as two sixteenth notes followed by an eighth note. So speed is really important. But the danger, I think, is that sometimes when we get into that speed mentality, we mandolin players cross over into what I call the tremolo zone. That's where we start unintentionally playing more than three notes for these embellishments. I think that's something we definitely want to avoid here. It kind of sounds sloppy, right? And the fun thing about these embellishments is that they sound really fun, exciting, and precise. And what helps give that precision is a definitive starting place and a definitive ending place. In fact, the ending place might be the most important part of all because the first two notes are played really, really fast, right? They're 16th notes, and it's only the third note that really rings out and contributes to the melody. And what really helps me play these is just zeroing in on that third note of the triplet, knowing, okay, that's my destination point. I gotta stop after that. And by making it maybe a little bit louder and a little bit stronger, it's gonna help really communicate that emphasis more strongly. All right, so now that you're familiar with this triplet idea, let's come back over to the 6-8 time signature with this jig picking pattern and talk about how we can insert these triplets into this framework. And in 6-8 time, I think there's basically six different opportunities to throw in a triplet, right? So let's talk about each starting with the first note and the measure. If you want to throw in a triplet at the beginning of this 6-8 time signature, this is what it would sound like. All right, so put on your critical thinking caps here with me and think through this because it's a little bit complex, right? If we didn't play the triplet, remember we're doing that down, up, down, down, up, down pattern. But here we're adding in this quasi triplet at the beginning of the measure. So we're gonna be playing that triplet with our normal down, up, down motion. We have a down, up for the first 16th notes there, followed by a down on the eighth note. But in order to get back on track with our jig picking pattern after this triplet, we're gonna to have to do another down stroke followed by a down, up, down to finish out the measure. So all together would be down, up, down, 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 up, down. Try playing that a few times with me. All right, so once you're kind of comfortable doing that, let's see if we can play a little exercise here. Let's take that same measure excerpt with the triplet on the first beat, see if we can play it over our D major scale. We're gonna change a note every measure and it's gonna sound something like this. All right, one down, five to go. Next, let's see if we can place a triplet on the second strong beat in the measure, which takes place on the fourth note in the measure. So same idea, but now we're just delaying the triplet to halfway through the measure. So for the pick directions here, we're doing a down, up, down for the first three eighth notes in this excerpt. Then we have that triplet coming up here where we're playing a faster down, up for those two 16th notes followed by a down and another down for the last two eighth notes of this measure. So it would be down, up, down, down, up, down, down. All right, so same idea here. Let's go through that D major scale again, seeing if we can now play the triplet starting on the fourth note of the measure. All right, so those two places in the measure, the first note and the fourth note of the measure, might be the most common places that you'll encounter triplets in this Irish jig picking pattern. And it makes sense because those are the two strongest parts of the measure. Also, we're already playing downstrokes there, so it's pretty easy to start a triplet with a downstroke. But there's also two other places that we have downstrokes in this jig picking pattern. So let's see what it's like to play triplets on the third note in the measure and on the sixth note in the measure. So let's start with the third note and it would sound something like this. So the 
pick directions here are down, up, down, up, down, up. I think this might be one of the easiest places to put in triplets because we're just alternating our pick for this entire measure, right? Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Not too bad, right? So let's come back over to that D major scale exercise and try the triplets on this third beat here for each note on that scale. Same idea now if we place a triplet on the sixth note in the measure, it's gonna sound something like this. So we're starting off this excerpt by doing down, up, down for the first three eighth notes. Then we have another down, up for those next two eighths. And then we're doing that triplet on the sixth beat. We're starting it there with those two sixteenth notes with a fast down, up, and we're finishing the triplet on the first beat of the repeat of this excerpt right there at the beginning of this measure. So it'll be down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. So a little bit more challenging since we're carrying that triple over the bar line, but we can do the same exercise with that D major scale here if we change where we're changing notes on the scale just ever so slightly. It sounds like this. All right, well that just leaves us two more places in this six eight measure to put in these triplets, right? Starting on note two and starting on note five. And these might be the most difficult spots to actually put these triplets in because these are where we normally play our upstrokes in our jig picking pattern, which leaves us with a couple different options to check out. So let's start off with that triplet on note two in our measure here. And so far in this video, we've only played these Irish triplets starting on a downstroke, which actually feels most comfortable to me because like we said earlier, we want that triplet to have a really definitive start and end. And it helps to really punctuate that with a downstroke stroke. So if you want to play this triple with the downstroke, we have to do some kind of rearranging of our picking pattern to make this work. Check this out. So here we would have down, down, up, down, down, up, down. That's what feels most comfortable to me. But another option that I've seen other players use is to start the triplet on an upstroke. That way you're doing less consecutive downstrokes, which might make it a little bit more fluid for your right hand. It would look like this. So it would be down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Try both ways and see what works best for you. I'm gonna to stick to the downstroke triplet and let's see if we can do this exercise over that D major scale again. All right, and last one here, same idea. Let's play that triplet on the fifth note of our measure now. So it would sound like this. Down, up, down, 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 up, down. Again, you can use the upstroke triplet here and the pick direction so be down, up, down, down, up, up, up. Again, try it both ways and when you're ready, let's do this over the D major scale again. Awesome work, folks. So you're already playing these triplets on every part of the measure, but here I wanna pause for a second and show you a couple different variations and variables to keep in mind. And first up, for all the triplets that we've looked at in this video so far, we've just been playing one pitch, right? We've just been playing the same note for all three notes of the triplet. And the technical term for this that I've heard some people use is calling this a stutter. And it's kind of a fun fact there. And it might be one of the most common styles of triplets out there. But there are some other triplets that we would play on the mandolin that involve more than one note. So let's talk about those. And the first variation that we'll look at is what you might call a neighbor tone triplet. That's where you start on one pitch, you go up to the neighboring tone on the scale, and then you come back to the note that you started on. So it might sound something like this. You may have noticed that I wasn't really allowing that middle note of the triplet here on the second fret to ring out quite as much as the open D. And that's kind of a stylistic preference. You hear a lot of tenor banjo players do that where they're muting that middle note and making the triplet sound more percussive than melodic. Sounds kind of cool. The next variation would be where you start on a pitch and then you go up on the second note of the triplet and then you stay on that note for the third note. It might sound something like this. So I'm starting on that open D going to the second fret on the second note of the triplet and staying there for the third note. You could also reverse the direction if you wanted to. Start on your E note and then go down to your open D string it would sound like this. 
one more idea that you might encounter is a passing tone triplet where you're playing three different notes going in ascending or descending order. It might sound like this. And all these variations are pretty challenging, right? Because they involve some fast motion from the left hand as well as the right hand and some coordination between the two to actually make these work. So take your time as you're going through these. All right, so you've basically got this concept down, but maybe the most important question to ask now is when should you apply these triplets to a tune? And that's a tough question. I think maybe the best answer is to listen to a recording from a respected Irish player of whatever tune that you're trying to learn, try to figure out where they're putting those triplets in and mimic them. That way you're learning the embellishments from a reputable source. But the challenge is if you're learning these tunes from tablature or from notation, or you go to a great website like thesession.org that has thousands and thousands of traditional Irish tunes, they're mostly notated without embellishments. So if you are learning from a transcription, let me show you a couple easy places that you can slip in these triplets without having to worry about things too much. And first, if you ever see a quarter note in your transcription, that's a really easy spot to throw in one of those stutters, you know, a triplet over the same note, because a quarter note is gonna take up the exact same amount of time as one of these triplets will. So if you encounter a rhythm like this, you could easily turn it into something like this with your triplets. Not to say that you always have to throw in a triplet on those quarter notes. Sometimes too many triplets is not a good thing. But if you're looking for an opportunity, that's a really easy one. Another one is if you have a melody that has two consecutive eighth notes on the same pitch, same idea. It's going to take up the same rhythmic space as a triplet, and you could easily insert in one there if you wanted to. So say you had a simple melody like this. Those two D notes in the middle of this measure could be a spot for a triplet if you want to. Another variation here would be to add the neighbor tone triplet idea into both of those excerpts for a little bit more of a muted sound like this. The other moving triplets that require maybe a little bit more musical detective work because you have to figure out how to squeeze in an extra pitch without totally changing the sound of the melody. It just takes some experimentation and some finagling, right? But uh, you got this. And now it's up to you to try out these triplet ideas over your favorite Irish jig. And if you record yourself, be sure to tag me over on Instagram. I'd love to share it in my story. Be sure to comment below if you have any further thoughts on Irish jig triplets. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you want to see more Celtic lessons like this on the channel. Join us over on Patreon if you want to get PDF transcriptions of all these different different exercises and some Irish jigs, including triplets written out for you. And check out some of the videos that you see here on screen if you want to keep all the mandolin content coming. So I look forward to seeing you in the next one.